Hi, and welcome to the fourth part of my series about um, writing applications with C++ using Qt and Boost. Um, today, we're, I'm going to focus on Qt and how to write menus and then also have a little look into widgets. Um, so, mainly the focus today is on menus. And for this, let me quickly show you where uh, we left on the last time. Um, this is the application coming up. So, um, as you see, uh, no big changes. I can delete items. I can create items and foo in. A widget for it, I can rename it to uh, my item and so what the next thing I'm now going to look at is uh, how to create these menus and let's hop back in the application for this. Here we are again. This is a code which actually sets up the menu. Um, I use Lambda to just simply set up the menu as I need to um, push back an action item and uh, set its data. And this data is a Q variant actually, but um, in my case I use uh, an enum to uh, store this and then later um, know which action has been executed. You're going to see that in the code below. Um, this lambda has uh, um, four parameters of an action and text for the menu, the actual uh, menu item that it's supposed to be, and uh, the uh, object pointer in, uh, to the parent, which is very common in Qt. I abuse a little bit the uh, index operator here to give me uh, the first an empty list and uh, call the setup action a few times. Um, there is no way to um, give this uh, data object with a constructor, so I have to use this way. And um, here are a few connections. Um, one of the connections, one of the slots, one of the signals I need to connect is. Uh, a custom context menu requested um, to this slot. Let's just simply quickly jump into this. Uh, this is the code which actually is executed when a right click happens inside the tree view. And um, first, I have to see if, if this uh, is valid. If there is, you know, if there is some item to be clicked at. And if that is the case, then I get the actual item. I try to find the menu, and some types might not have menus, so if there is no menu, just return. Um, and then this is a way to show the menu. Um, QMenu has a static exec method, and um, I just get the menu, which is a Q list of Q action pointers, which in for Qt, actually, a menu is a list of Q action pointers. And I have to use uh, map to global to uh, simply um, get the position of the mouse click to global coordinates in the window that the uh, menu can be displayed in the right location. And um, this is not as asynchronous. This is just uh, blocking the application and displaying the menu, uh, the men the menu and um, then returning the action item. Um, if, the, if there's no item selected, this is null, so I have to test for that. And then I simply put a switch uh, onto what, what I want to do. I either want to create uh, new items in the tree, or I want to delete a uh, widget. And the other code I looked the last time. And, um, while in the next part, I'm going to look more into widgets. Um, for now, it's important for me to actually uh, quickly show you the interface. Close this window here. Um, to quickly show you the interface, which is called here. Um, this is a factory, which we saw in the last episode. And 
those uh, are the parameters which will be handed to the constructor of uh, such a widget. And actually, I call my widgets panels. And this comes from WX widgets, as I worked with WX widgets for a long time. And there, the classes for such uh, panels are called WX panels. Um, so that's why I call them still panels. Um, so this is the panel for the directory. It's derived from QWidget. Um, all panels have in common that they have like a, a shared item pointer to be able to access the tree, and they have a pointer to their data as I, you know, I, I store in the tree a variant, and I need to have access to the actual data to display it. And this is um, the constructor. And there's a destructor and other things. So it's, it's not a lot of uh, stuff in this class. Um, this update item has one important role if I update an item which actually re represents the name of an object which is displayed in the tree. I need to make sure that I have some sort of callback to let the application know that. And um, so that's, that's the purpose of this. And then we see the item, which also will give us the data and um, the object uh, pointer for the parent. Let's just look in the CPP file. Um, there you see I, uh, I move the uh, shared item in, in the item. Um, and then I just initialize the class. What I need to do then is to, to call set text on the actual um, line edits. And I need to install an event filter, which I do via Lambda, um, which gets this pointer and the update item callback. And this Lambda is then installed as an event filter with an event filter class. And the reason I do that is that in, in the case the focus is lost in this uh, dear name line edit, I want to store the name in the actual data class, and I want to update the tree, which is done via update item, uh, which brings us back to the main window. Um, scrolling up, and here it is that item, um, I quickly have to see if the source actually exists. Um, otherwise, this also would be possible to call this with a null pointer. Um, then I have to, to change the text and to call notify data changed on the tree model. That's actually the important part to notify the tree model that uh, it now can uh, that needs to update a part of the tree. And from this item, I have to create a, an index, and this index is then um, actually forwarded via a signal into the slots which are connected by the tree view. And then that's automatically updated as we saw. Um, Next time, I, I want to look into the event filter class and why I choose this way and how um, the widgets, etc., are working together. And um, then, um, so next time, it's, it's going to be a bit more about widgets. But then also, um, the, after that, in the week, I probably will uh, look into messaging and um, event propagation in, in my application. Thank you for listening and see you next time.